Arsenal dropped the ball with David Lewis culpable again while Norwich City stunned champions Manchester City over the weekend. Welcome to the Nutmeg on Guardian TV. My name is Solomon Fo and Dennis returns to us in the studio. How's it going, Dennis? Very well, Solomon. Trust you had a fantastic weekend. A great weekend. You know, Premier League matches were there to light up my weekend. Uh, fantastic. So going into the meet of the matter, we had Watford against Arsenal and it was literally a game of two halves. We saw Aubameyang show how incredible Arsenal's attack could be uh, with his clinical two goals in the first half. While in the second half, it was another thing entirely. It was the spotlight on Arsenal's defence. David Lewis, Socrates, causing mayhem in that defence. Don't you think it's just a problematic situation for Arsenal at this point? It is problematic for the NIM side. And then in as much as they've got a problem in their hands, I also think they've got uh, something to also uh, be joyous about, which is talking about the Arsenal attack. I'd like to start from that note because you can't just overlook the... Uh, five goals that uh, Obama Young have scored this season so mm -hmm. far and how prolific that attack line has been for the but, but for that's the, for the, the worry. Arsenal side. Exactly, that's but, not but, the, the, but the worry in itself is that in as much as this team has uh, the potency to score a lot of goals, in the same way they are so much exposed in the defence. You know, case in point was the match against Watford when you see that Arsenal <coughs> were the visiting side went ahead, scored two goals in the same way. You expect the defensive line to replicate the same sort of performance, but no, it was something else. And then we see that, you know, while the team tried to build from the back, you know, they were giving the ball away to uh, the Watford players, which Tom cleverly capitalized upon and scored the, the first goal before uh, David Luiz, you know, fouled the player in the penalty box and for the Arsenal to concede the equaliser by, via a penalty. I think this is a great worry for Unai Emre. And in as much as we want to give the team uh, well, some knocks you know, in defence, I also feel that the team lacks the kind of players to play the, that sort of transitional now, play it, tactics. It, yeah, now that you're talking on that, now you're about touching on that, I, I, I wanted to ask, is it solely a problem for... Arsenal's defence, I'm talking about the, the, the players themselves, you're talking about David Lewis and Socrates. Is it not a, a, an organisational problem? Is it not a structural problem in that defence? Seeing that, now, the game against Watford, there was a problem with the transition, that from the back line to the yeah, attack, which cost one of the goals. That's the first goal. Yeah. And it happened just minutes before that Gwendozi um, lost the ball and they were this close to conceding a goal. Don't you think Una Emery should have made some changes, adjusted um, the way they play, the, the team played from the defence? They should start moving the ball forward, but we didn't see that happen. And immediately, they, um, that's Watford got the first goal. We saw that change. He telling them to move the ball upwards. The, Don't you think Emery change, has some blame to do in this? Uh, yeah, he has, he has a lot of blame to do in this. And then, in the same way, I also want you to also consider that in as, mo as many times Asma have also tried to kick the ball from the defence, you know, to the, their opponent's attack, they have always also fall short in you know, winning uh, area duels against their opponents. And probably that was some of the things that you know, Emery considered and just preferred to stay with you know, building from the back transitional play. Whereas I still maintain that this team lacked the sort of players to, you know, to execute this sort of or tactics, mm. you know, case in point is a player like uh, Socrates. Whenever Socrates is on the ball, believe you me, Socrates is not so confident on the ball, and then he does not have the best of passing accuracy, uh, you true, know, working true. for him. So, and if you're using such a player to to execute this sort of tactics, you only expect what you saw against Watford. Yeah, so now, I I away from that, we saw this same team play out in, in a different game. That's the game between Norwich City and Manchester City. We saw Nicolas Otamendi also spill the ball and Norwich um, um, capitalised on that and got their, uh, their goal in that game. Now, Pep Guardiola said his defence is probably not the best at this point. And don't you think it's a problem that Guardiola should have... Um, faced and solved during the break, saying that they lost Vincent company and they didn't bring any, any replacements for him. And now there was the unfortunate incident of Imeric Laporte getting injured. Now he's stuck with Nicolas Otamendi and, and John Stones and they considered three goals over the weekend. Everyone knows that it is a problem and a challenge in the hands of Pep Guardiola now for his Manchester City side. But before I dwell much on that, I'd like to also talk about the City attack. 
you know, in the match against Norwich, we see that they held possession like they've always done for like the first 30 minutes of the game. Watford had nothing, had no business in the possession count of the match. But we see that Manchester City only held possession during the match, but had no direction, had no mm. direction to score. They were just, you know, just merry-go-rounding all over the pitch. And what happened next? Uh, Norwich City got the first chance, they scored. Got the second chance, they were clinical, you know, well, with uh, a pookie assist in that place. But, you know, talk about the Manchester City defence. They've got all the things to blame for that. But then I also think that Pep Guardiola also shares part of this blame. In as much as he's got a very large squad, you expect him to have, you know, done very well in, he rotates the attacking line and the midfield. You expect him to have done very well in rotating the defensive uh, players as well. But he's not done, done that so much well. Like case in point was our uh, last season. Nicolas Otamendi and John Stoes only played about eight matches together, mm. which they considered about 12 to 13 goals. And then you, right now, you're dealing, you only have these two players as the only option left for you. And I, only th I think that this will be a problem that will keep reoccurring for this team in as much as Laporte still remains injured. And the only solution I feel they have right now is just admitting that, fine, we're going to concede goals. In the same way, their attacking line should be prolific and should be, uh, should be scoring better than their opponents. Yeah, it was fairly easy for Tim Opuki, who got a goal and an assist in that game. He's got six goals now, yeah? Uh, but one person we're going to be talking about now is Tammy Abraham, who's got seven goals. He's leading the goal scorer chart. Alongside, he's, alongside uh, Sergio, Sergio Aguero. Aguero. Now, he, he's, he's such a wonderful young lad. The, the fact that he has proven himself um, in the championship before he came to Chelsea, that um, it was unknown at the championship with Aston Villa before he returned to Chelsea. And it, it's, it's also instructive in the sense that Wolves were about getting um, Abraham off the hands of Chelsea. And it just happened that he didn't go there. And now he's scoring a hat-trick against them in the Blues column. Don't you think this lad is yet to stay? He's certainly here to stay because you look at uh, Tammy Abraham. And I actually put up a tweet after uh, the match, which I said that oh, if you're looking for the definition of strong mentality, Tammy Abraham is the answer right now. Because you look at how we started the season, Oh, he could only have hit the woodwork against Manchester, Manchester United, United in their four new loss opening fixture of the Premier League and also in the UEFA Super Cup. He oh, lost, yeah, yeah, he lost, he lost a the penalty, penalty and then the whole world came crashing upon him. He was racially abused. And what does he do? He's just been scoring ever since then. And I think that, you know, he's also a, an answer to the a setting. Uh, is he an irony now or just uh, a, a setting? cause that has been existing for a while for anyone that wears the number nine jersey for Chelsea. Now, Tam Abraham is here putting on the number nine jersey. He's been scoring goals for fun. His older play is great. His speed is awesome and his finishing is superb. Do you think Lampard has made up his mind over Tam Abraham? Um, you're looking at it, there's Olivier Giroud, there's Michel Batshuayi and there's Tam Abraham. It seems he's going to be sticking his guns with Tam Abraham, yeah? I, I, I think he's sticking his guns with uh, Tam Abraham and do not forget that uh, Abraham's first goal for this season as soon as he scored the goal, he ran straight to uh, Frank Lampard. And in the post-match conference, then, as far as I can remember, uh, Frank Lampard, you know, uh, said he puts his total trust in uh, Tammy Abraham, in as much as he still got the likes of Michi Bashua, he's got Olivier Giroud, and also Tammy Abraham. But if I was uh, Frank Lampard, mm -hmm. believe you me, you know, fine, you could say that he's got two proven and experienced strikers yeah. aside That's Tammy Abraham. But I think that he should be sticking his guns with Tammy Abraham because if you decide to play Olivier Giroud, Olivier Giroud does not, he's not the kind of player that fits into every tactics you want to deploy in different matches. Case in point is that Olivier Giroud is a player that is known for his great older player abilities yeah, yeah, and then his, his physical strength and also, you know, his uh, aerial, aerial presence. But you look at a player like uh, Michi Bashwai, fine, he was on loan with Dortmund, scored a couple of goals there. But if you look at him closely, you realize that Michi Bashwai is more or less like, you know, just uh, a poacher. He is not necessarily the best player of the ball. But put all of that together, I think a combination of abilities, in, maybe not physical abilities, 
but uh, football playing abilities in Olivier Giroud and Bashwai is what we've got in Tammy Abraham. Like I said earlier on, he's spacey. He knows how to use the ball very well, and then he's a great finisher. Well, Dennis has waxed lyrical about Tammy Abraham in that pa a couple of minutes. Now, do you think it's going to be finishing um, anywhere around the high school score uh, mark? He's got the potential. He's got the potential to do so because if you look at uh, the Chelsea side, do not forget that they've still got a couple of attacking players who are yet to join in the free that is going on right now at uh, Stamford Bridge. You know, uh, for instance, a player like Carlos, you know, there is yet to join the team and also uh, Loftus-Cheek is yet to join the team fully and you know by the time these two guys join the team coupled with what uh, Mason Mount is doing with the team right now I think uh, Tammy Abraham has everything working for him right now and do not also forget that the uh, uh, inclu inclusion of William in the team this weekend actually played a very important part in his performance this weekend and you can just begin to say that this guy seems to be the beginning for Tammy. Incredible thoughts there by Dennis Reze. Thank you so much for coming Always to us. Always a pleasure, Solomon. So that's it from us on the Not Meg on Guardian TV. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not subscribed already, you should absolutely subscribe to this YouTube channel. Feel free to drop your opinions for us in the comment section. Do you think Tammy Abraham will finish the IS goal score? What do you think um, uh, that Pep Guardiola should do to improve his defense? And seriously, what can Emery do to improve that defense of Arsenal? Thank you so much for watching. My name is Solomon Fowe.